Welcome back to the ShapeDiver tutorial series. Today I'll keep introducing the input and output components of the ShapeDiver plugin. And if you've made it this far, you now understand the important concepts of working with ShapeDiver and the types of workflows we're dealing with. Um, but I'd like to introduce today's topic uh, with a simple example that will really expose uh, the challenge we're tackling. So let's look at the simple mesh repairing tool. I'm going to start from a version of the Stanford bunny, which contains a few holes, right? And I would like to make a watertight mesh from the Stanford bunny here. So I'm going to reference it in my definition. And then I can try to uh, close the mesh using the close mesh components uh, that's included with the Perfafish plugin, which we support on ShapeDiver. So here I input my mesh, I use the close mesh component, and the result is indeed a watertight mesh. Easily see the repaired mesh uh, produced by the definition. So now I have this definition that I can save and I can share with people, and anyone can open it in Rhino and reference their own mesh here and bake the results and have their repaired mesh. So, and that's typically what we want to do is to have an app that will be uh, useful to anyone we share the definition with. So, how can we? Uh, use ShapeDiver to make it easier to share this definition online with anyone that you know potentially doesn't even uh, have Grasshopper installed or doesn't use Grasshopper in in their uh, everyday work. And what we need here is a way for uh, users to be able to reference their own meshes once the definition is online and on the other hand to also bake results from the definition and obviously they won't be able to access the, the grasshopper canvas so we need to provide an alternative to to this uh, workflow and that's exactly what the input and outputs components allow to do so we can start with the geometry input here which is the one we're going to need to use in this case and what this component does is that once the definition is online, it's going to provide a button, an, an input, where uh, users are able to upload their own files and use them as uh, an input to be processed in the, in the online definition. So let's give it a try. What I'm going to do is to use a filter, testing whether you online users did already upload an item or if they did not specify any item yet. So I'll test if this object is null. And if it is null, I'm going to use the default mesh here, the bunny. And otherwise, I will use the mesh that the users uploaded online, right? So here, I make sure that I always have a mesh. Uh, wait, that's the other way. Okay. And I use this mesh to close, and I will also make sure to move this mesh so we can see both in the viewer. Let's say I'm going to set it here. All right, so I will here see in the online viewer both the input mesh and the output mesh. I have to internalize this one, the default one. And now I can upload this definition. And here is the uploaded definition. I made the background a bit darker so we can see better. But as expected, we see our input mesh with the holes and our processed mesh uh, watertight as an output. 
And uh, most importantly, we see the, the upload button that was generated by the geometry input component. So that's a button that users can use to select a local file. For example, I have this truncated cone here and use, use it as an input of the definition. So here I have as input this open uh, truncated cone and the definition makes it watertight. So a couple of notes here. First, just like for the text input, you can rename this component, upload, for example, and the name here that you define will be used for the upload button in the viewer. So that's the first point. The second point is a bit more important. Uh, it's about the allowed uh, upload uh, formats. So you might have noticed that I've used on the OBJ files for now, and there's actually two formats we support, OBJ for meshes, and DXF for 2D drawings. If you double click on the components actually, you'll see that by default, um, both of these formats are allowed. So users can select one or the other format and, and the de definition will try to process them. Uh, but you can also restrict to one or the other uh, if you want. And just like also for the text input, we have a, a maximum length for the string that the users can enter. You can also de define the maximum file size that the users are allowed to use as input. One last point I wanted to discuss about this uh, geometry input component is this URI input here. So for my definition here, I have used a filter to define a, ge a default geometry that's used if the user did not um, pick any file using the upload button. But there's actually a, a built-in uh, parameter here that allows you to do this. And it, it allows you to reference a file stored online somewhere in any, any location. For example, here I have a file stored on an Amazon bucket, um, ellipsoid.obj. Uh, and if I input it here, it will be used as the default input. So let me hide. Okay, so I just have an ellipsoid with a hole that I created for that example. And here it's going to be used until the user uh, picks a file. So you can do that instead of using the filter. So if I, if I do it like this, I can remove the filter and just directly connect my output. Because it's always going to uh, use at least this default geometry that I defined. So here. I can show it and show the results. Of course, I have to move it more because it's a bigger mesh, but here it is. Right, so if I upload this one, the online model is in an identical situation. I still have this default geometry that I can replace uh, by uploading my own file using this, the upload button and process uh, the mesh. So the only difference is that uh, here we're using an external uh, mesh pulled from a, from a URL instead of a mesh that is internalized inside the definition. Note that you can also test a component locally because it will work with a local file path here. So if I use again a bunny, for example, I can replace it and use it as an input. And where it is, the bunny is much smaller. OK, but obviously, this local file path needs to be replaced by uh, a URL if you're going to use this parameter once you upload the model. One last short note is that there's a second output to this component here on top of the object is uh, a material but this is not implemented yet so it will in the future uh, be able to import uh, the material as well if it's defined all right so that's it for the for the input components but now obviously if we look at this online application uh, users are allowed to upload a file they can it can be processed by the algorithm and they get the output, 
but there's no way for them yet to um, retrieve this output from the online app. And that's what the ShapeDiver output components are for. So we look at the most standard way to output um, files from the viewer, which is the ShapeDiver export download component. And this is a component that will act as a mirror to the uh, geometry input components in the sense that it will create another button in the viewer uh, that can be used to trigger the exports and actually download the file from the online viewer. Its, its inputs are pretty simple. You have to input the geometry you want to use. In our case, uh, it will be the mesh, the process mesh. And you input two strings, while one for the file format. And this is the same component used for any type of, uh, of file export from the viewer. So the, the allowed formats are pretty wide here. It's geometry formats, 3DM, STL, DXF, DWG, STEP, OBJ for now. Uh, but also text formats or image formats. Uh, we'll look at those a bit later. But for now, we're going to uh, choose to export as OBJ because the input was also an OBJ file. And a final uh, input here is the name of the export file. So here I'll just give it a static name, example, export. But of course, this name can be made parametric and uh, somehow uh, relate to the parameters chosen by the user. So if I upload this file now, I can see that indeed, in addition to my upload button, which I renamed already, so now it's actually called upload, I, all, I have an additional button here, which allows me to download the results. Uh, which I I'll put it here, so the results of the algorithm. So when I click on the button, it's going to send a request to the servers to, to process the export. And finally, I can click on download and get the example. If I import it here. I can see the code that my online definition um, created. Once again, you can rename this component as you wish. Download, for example. And the name of the component here will be used for the export button in the online viewer. That's the first point. Another thing to note is that, obviously, you can input any component you want from the definition to, the, to this export component, which means that what you're going to export is not necessarily exactly what you're going to see in the viewer. Uh, there's at least two cases where this is useful. Uh, the first one is where you, you have a model, for example, of a table or any product, any object you, you, you want to display. And what you want to export is just 2D drawings or some parts of this model, some data. And in that case, obviously, you're not going to export everything that is displayed in the viewer. A second case, which is very common, is that very often, what you want to export is geometry for production. Let's say, for example, you want to export a mesh for 3D printing. And very often, the meshes you need for 3D printing need to be much more detailed than what you really need to visualize in the online viewer. And so for performance reasons, it's always possible to export a detailed mesh, but say, uh, in the definition, you're going to reduce the mesh or, or simplify it a bit and display only the simplified version in the online viewer, which is most of the time enough for a good uh, visualization. In our case, for example, um, I could want to export the mesh in its initial position instead of the one I moved uh, with respect to the input mesh. So I would directly export this one and only use this one for display, for example. And I could even display it with the shape diver display geometry component so that I can give it some color. So hide this one, use a simple material and make it green. 
right? And here we have a really clear separation between the geometry used for visualization and the one used for exporting. So I wanted to show you a full workflow of importing and exporting files from the definition, uh, but I won't dig deeper yet in the export components. I will do that in the next tutorial and all the other features of the output um, category. But I'll finish today by presenting the other uh, inputs that we have. There's two other types, image inputs and text file inputs. I can start with text file inputs. It's a very simple uh, component which is used uh, in addition to the text input. With the text input component that I presented last time, uh, you can directly input text inside the online viewer. But as we saw, um, the maximum length of a text is limited to 10,000. So I can't, I, I can't have uh, text longer than this. So if I need to work with longer text files, CSV files, for example, or any uh, heavy data file, I would have to use the text file input. And it works uh, in a similar way than the geometry input. So you can um, double click on it and specify which file formats are accepted txt, csv, json, xml, and a maximum file size. And this will create an upload button inside the viewer. And you can also define a, a, a default file that is used if no file is uploaded by the user. And for example, here, I can input a local path. Um, if I have one somewhere. Yeah, here. And then the text is imported just like for the text input component, so nothing too surprising here. And finally, I'll look at the image input, which works again uh, in a very similar way. If I double click on it, I see the supported file formats BMP, GIF, JPEG, PNG, TIFF. And I can also set the maximum file size. And I can uh, so either define a filter, like I did for the mesh earlier, and internalize an image to be used uh, by default, or specify an external URL here. And I can, for testing, specify a local path, but obviously never forget to replace it with a URL. Um, before you upload your files. But here, with my local path, it works. I output a grasshopper bitmap, as we discussed in the initial tutorial. And we will have a special tutorial about image uh, manipulation. And it also inputs uh, the dimensions of this imported image. Let's conclude today with an application for the image input component. So here I already set it up and I have my bitmap and I can use it, for example, directly as a texture. So for texturing, I need to use the full sheet ever material component and I can input the image as a texture. And unfortunately, this OBJ image does not have texture coordinates, so I need to create some. For example, um, I'm going to use human to create a spherical mapping. Good enough. So the mesh to map. And I need a base plane. So I'll define one here. Let's see how it looks. All right, good enough, for example. So now I can upload this new definition. And here the joke's on me, because I did forget to replace my local file path by something else. So the definition works, but uh, obviously I don't have an image by default now. So it will anyways work if 
I use the upload button and I upload it again from here. So now I can upload my texture and it will be displayed on the bunny. All right, that's it for today. So thanks again for following those tutorials. Uh, you'll notice that we did not uh, finish looking at all the, all the output components from the plugin. So we will have another tutorial next time about those and all the advanced features uh, of, the, of this category. Thanks again and see you next time.